portion W2 of the expected return of asset 2, which is straightforward to do. We know ER1 and ER2. We've listed them over here. So we can always calculate what the expected return is. Okay, so let me just do that here. So I'm going to say is that the expected the expected return of the portfolio, let's symbolize that by EP, is simply equal to, well, it's equal to W1, here's W1, multiplied by the expected return for asset 1, which is 3 in this case. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the expected return constant. I'm going to make that an absolute reference uh, to that cell because I'm going to be dragging this, this particular formula down the column. Okay? So that's the, let me actually just, sorry. So we, if we had 100% in, in the portfolio, we would expect the return to be 100% of uh, asset one in the portfolio. We, we would expect the return to be to be 3%. Okay, and let me just—I just want to left align that cell there, okay, so that the formulas actually are okay. So this is W1 times the expected return of asset one. Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to add in uh, W2 times the expected return of asset two. So it's plus. Uh, let's say W2 times the expected return of asset 2. Right? And once again, I'm going to keep assets 2's expected return fixed or absolute by wrapping its column uh, symbol up in dollar signs. So what we can actually see here is that under these weightings here, with 100% of asset 1 okay, in the portfolio, we'd expect the return to be 3%, which is we'd expect to be receiving what asset 1 in, in isolation would receive. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this down now. So what we've actually done here is we've actually calculated the expected returns okay, uh, under each one of these conditions. So if we put 90% of asset 1 into the portfolio and 10% of asset 2, we'd expect a return of 3.2%. If we put 50% of asset 1 and 50% of asset 2, we'd expect a return of 4%. Okay? And that's based off this particular formula here. Now what we need to also calculate is we need to calculate the variance. I'm actually going to do this here because this is actually handier in Excel for charting. So I'm going to actually say the variance, the var uh, of our portfolio. Oh, let me just do that in caps. Okay, the var of our portfolio. Okay, The var of the portfolio is defined here. It's the first weighting squared times times the variance of the first portfolio plus the second weighting squared times the variance of the second portfolio plus twice weighting one times weighting two times the correlation between the first and the second portfolio times each of their individual standard deviations. Now, we have all of this information. We have the W1s listed down here and the W2s. Okay, and we also have the we also have the the variances for each portfolio. There's sigma one squared and there's sigma two squared, and we also have the correlation coefficient, which is which is uh, let's say which is row one two, which is listed here. Albeit that that probably should be R one two because this is actually sample data that we're actually going to be dealing with and not not actual population data. So these all actually should be really modified yet yeah, to, to represent uh, sample values going in here. So the variance uh, is equal to, I'm just going to left align this so it doesn't uh, overlap. The variance is equal to uh, W1 squared. Okay, so I'm just going to put that in brackets. It's W1 times W1 times the variance of the first portfolio, which is here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fix that because once again, we're going to fix the variance because that doesn't change when we're going down to the portfolios. So the variance for that asset is going to be the same. Plus, it's W2 squared times the variance of the second portfolio so that's going to be plus we have w2 squared which is this cell here times itself times the variance of the second portfolio which is 4.2 and once again i'm going to fix d19 uh, so that's an absolute reference to the variance of the second portfolio and finally it's plus it's plus you can see this this longer thing here it's twice two times uh, w1 times w2 times the correlation coefficient, which is here, uh, times, it's times the standard deviation of asset one times the standard deviation of asset two. So we've got the variance, so we really need to calculate the square root, SQRT, okay, of this variance here, uh, times SQRT, the square root of the second variance here, okay, which gives us Gives us this part, this this part, this uh, term here in this particular in this particular expression. Okay. Uh, once again, we're going to keep our variances fixed. So I'm going to wrap them up in dollar signs. 
Okay, kind of wrap that up in dollar signs. I'm also going to keep my correlation fixed. The only thing that we want to be able to change uh, as we're as we're applying creating all of these different portfolios are the weights. Okay, so everything other than the weights are going to be wrapped in dollar signs just to keep them as absolute references. So in this particular case, when I hit return, you can see that the you can actually see that the variance, the expected variance, yeah, uh, when we have a hundred percent in of asset one 